Okay, this is the Dell S500 Ultra Short Throw Projector. Um, I've taken it off the ceiling mount. Now I want to remove the main casing for the logic board and everything. So, in order to do that, you're going to have to remove the main screws for the casing. So that's these two here down and then you want to hit the four corners there down there and down all the way down here as well as these two screws here which are next to the security cable bracket and the center one then it just takes a bit of prying to get it loose if your projector still has the cable casing or the cable casing box is off you will also have to remove that by loosening those two screws on either side um, because it has a little lip that will hold the casing on. So you're going to kind of pop the edges separate. You can use a, a plastic smudge stick to do so. And then slowly lift it because you have this ribbon cable you have to separate. Um, just lift the black uh, bar and you'll be able to separate that. You're going to lift up this little black um, locking mechanism right here. It goes up and down. Just lift that up and the cable will actually slide out. Now you have to remove the top plate from the board area. You're going to remove a total of 11 screws from around the edges here as well as these two screws. Now you have to remove the top plate from the board area. You're going to remove a total of 11 screws from around the edges here as well as these two screws right here and here. And then the last step is to separate this tape right here to pull the plate out. Um, the plate does have sort of little teeth along this side, so you'll want to tip out the other side and slide it out. You'll have to remove all the um, holder screws for your VGA connections here, there's six of them. And then also, if you have a wireless card, you'll wanna remove that. That's in this slot right here. Pull that out, and then slide out the card. Okay, now let's take a look at the cable connections on the board for the projector. Um, going from the lens front to the back, you'll have to disconnect these two cables, the red and the black, the blue and the silver, then you'll have to remove the screws on the ribbon cable, the larger ribbon cable. And then you have all of the cables on the side there. And I do suggest um, disconnecting them and then clipping them together with a binder clip. That will keep the cables out of your way as well as make sure you don't lose any when you're um, putting the plate back in place. Um, the only fan cord that goes through the center there is the silver one. I did this in steps and made an error initially. Um, now you have to remove the screws to remove the bottom plate. There's one, two, and three screws, one over by the cables. You can see I didn't have them clipped so that's why uh, they're in the way. With the bottom plate out of the way, now you can um, move the casing for the power supply out of your way. You'll have to remove the four screws on the corner. One, two, three, and four. You do not have to remove uh, this bracket or screw. It's loose enough. Once you remove the screws, you're going to lift it up. And then what I did was I placed a screwdriver kind of across in the middle to hold it up so I can access the heat sink that you see there. You have to remove those two screws on either side of the heat sink to get to the board which has the DLP chip. So I've removed the heat sink. I just want you to see where the washers are and notice the springs on the screws so when you put it back together they're in the right place. And then once that's out of the way you can now remove the board which has the DLP chip on it. Um, and just You can flip it over and there's the chip. Okay, so here we have the board with the DLP chip on it. Um, it is kind of hard to see. When I take the chip out, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, you're just going to take a simple flathead here. Um, you can, if you look, there's a little lock and unlock. Just turn it to the unlock position, and the chip lifts up pretty easily. Um, you can kind of see the fuzzy areas there. Those are the mirrors that are stuck 
um, in the wrong position. So that's where your black and white specks come from. Um, so you're going to go ahead and discard that chip. There's really no use for it. Um, on the board itself, you may want to go ahead and clear, clean off the old um, thermal paste. I have this sort of clipped down, but down in here you can see some extra thermal paste. I would clean that off. Um, put some fresh thermal paste on your new chip. Now this is my old one, um, but I'm just for demonstration purposes. You're going to put your thermal paste on there, and then you're going to set it in place. Make sure your angle, angled little corner there is... is um, in the correct spot and then you're just going to lock it back in place and that part of the repair is done now you can return the little board to your projector when you put the heat sink back together with the board uh, with the DLP chip just make sure your washers are in the correct spot in between the two and also that the screws have the spring you're going to line them up and then just carefully put them back into the LCD projector without um, losing the washer or the screws. Then you're going to want to tighten on either side of the heat sink to keep it in place. Once you get the heat sink and board back in place, you're going to tighten those screws on either side. I do recommend tightening one, then the other, one, then the other until they're completely tight. Don't tighten one all the way and then the other one. Now you can uh, reattach the casing around the power supply, remove whatever you've been holding it up with, put it in place, and then you run to replace your screws on the four corners. Just again make sure you don't have any cables stuck where they shouldn't be stuck. Once you get those screws in place, you should be able to put your bottom plate in place, then your board, then your top plate, and the outer casing. Okay, now the bottom plate is in place. Um, you'll have to put a few screws in, make sure the fan cable, the silver coated fan cable, is coming through the center. Um, there's a screw there, you'll have to line up the nub to make sure the plate goes all the way down in where it needs to sit and then the other screw, and um, this screw could go on this corner or the corner by the uh, bundle of cables. Um, I did this repair in part, so I may have missed something. You want to make sure those cables are up, then you have your thin ribbon cable and the larger ribbon cable. The There's a blue fan cord close to those, and then the red and black. To get the board piece in, all these connections here have to go through. Um, these connections here are actually on a smaller board that does plug into the main board. Um, so that could become separated um, when you pull it out. Just make sure it's properly seated or these ports are not going to work for you. Um, and now I'm going to connect the cables. Alright, so I've connected all of the various cables. We've got the thicker black cable there then the silver fan cable, then the skinnier blue cable, and the red skinny cable, and the skinny black cable right there. Then you want to connect this ribbon. This locking mechanism goes in and out to lock that in. So you're going to pull it out and then slide the ribbon in with the essentially the blue side up and then push that in to lock that in place. Once it's locked in place, you want to make sure it feeds through the ribbon cable bracket you see on the left, um, and then put those screws in. Then you will need to attach the silver and blue cords in their location, and then the red and the black, which is near the lens. Once all of the cables are attached, you're going to um, reinsert the top plate. Line up the tabs along the side where the cables attach, and then you're going to put in a total of 11 screws kind of around the corner, as well as the tape tab on the right lower right-hand corner from this view. And then there's also two screws sort of in the middle area there that you're going to have to attach. Once your top plate is in place, you'll want to reconnect the screws for the various pin cables, there's six of them, as well as reinstall your um, wireless card into that port, which is right there. 
Now with the um, casing back in place, you're going to put the screws back in. There's two there, and then kind of around the uh, corners of the main body of the projector, you have uh, four corners there, as well as two screws next to the security cable connection and the center screw. Then your last step is going to be reconnecting your cable connect, uh, cover. However, you may want to wait to do that until you have the device mounted again and your cables connected and then you would put the casing back and put the last two screws on the side.